three. Jordan's got the rebound. And Coach Jones wants a little more rebounding and assists from Marcus Jordan, doesn't he? Yeah, well, because he needs to become more of a complete player. Tom Herzog kept that alive. Soko was called for the personal. It's his first. Coaches versus cancer this week. And all coaches will be wearing sneakers with their suits. It raises awareness for cancer, cancer research. We got our Nike basketball shoes on right now, That's actually. Right. True story. That's not us, but those are ours. Ours are black. It'll be interesting to see if UCF presses this possession, you know, knowing the fact that they're, they're a little depleted because they have a couple guys sitting out for injuries. It'll be interesting, they're not, they're not going to press. They pressed after every single free throw this year. So Coach Jones opts out to kind of save the legs, save the energy, well, get back down, and lock down on defense. Down two players, Dyak yep. Knight and Romson. And two of the fastest players for UCF. What a pass from Sanders. Moore got stuffed by both Herzog and Clanton. Big scrum, Taylor Young getting tied up, and it'll be a jump ball. Well, the bottom line is you just don't bring it in against Tom Herzog and Keith Clanton because, doggone it, they're going to block it. Bottom line. They're, they rank one and two in Conference USA and block shots. Herzog at 2.4 a game, Clanton at 2.3. That's best for... Top 50 nationally, too. Clanton ranks 31st nationally, and Herzog's 26th. UCF is the best shot-blocking team in the country. At 6.9 a game as a team. Clanton in the paint. Nice feed from Herzog, and one. That's a good, that's a good dump down by Tom. That's one of the more underrated parts of his game is that he's a pretty good post-to-post -post interior passer. As you can see, Keith going up strong. It's like somebody's been working out with shake weight, Mr. Bowman. <laughs> that was their bread and butter in the first 10 games of the season, I thought, is that they were so good working that high-low between Keith Clanton and Tom Herzog and post-to-post -post, because so many teams were doubling Keith in the post because he was so effective with his back to the basket and he would dump down to Tom. And they kind of got away from that a little bit. And you'll see... You got a little 2-3 zone right now for UCF. Well, 10 minutes into the game, and Clanton's on the scoreboard for the first time. Completed the three-point play. Johnson, he is quick. Kick out. And watch UAB's guards along the baseline there. They will, they will start going in and out, run along the baseline, across the blocks. They'll get shots like that. Quincy Taylor for three. They have a great zone offense. You'll, you'll, you'll see them do constantly running along the baseline. They're going to try to create overloads, overloads in a zone. Clanton the hook. Short. The fight for it. Soku's got it. Johnson, here he comes. He's got four assists already. Looking for number five if Sanders can finish. Johnson here, he is on pace to set the Blazers' record for a career assist leader. They're going to try and ball screen almost every wing to make the defense shift. Sosa did a nice job defensively right there on Sanders. Tanner looking in the post to Clint. Here's Keith. He's back to the basket. Let's see what move he's got. Turnaround. Missed it. You get the sense a little stagnant on offense for UCF the last three or four possessions. Moore. That jumper's off the front rim. Keith Clinton. So you don't have anything in transition here. So good job, Isaac Sosa. You know, if I'm UCF right now, I want to run a set. And they're going to run a set right now to try and get some type of bucket. Sosa in the paint. That'll be a call against the Blazers. 
Jeff Johnson whistled for that. Here comes Jordan. We're under eight minutes. We will step aside. UAB with a one-point lead, seven minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the first half. Taylor with this three-pointer. A 22-21 lead for UAB here against UCF. Head coach George O'Leary in attendance. He rounded out his coaching staff this week with the hiring of Al Siemenson to coach the linebackers. He promoted linebackers coach John Skladaney to the defensive coordinator position to replace the departed Dave Huxtable, who left for a job at Wisconsin. So O'Leary's staff uh, in place, and there's Keith Tribble, the AD here at UCF. His team's finding unprecedented success this season. Yeah, Both the football team and basketball team reaching the top 25s at the same time. Yeah, a historic season for UCF, there's no doubt about it. Certainly hate to see Coach Hux go. You know, he was definitely a fan favorite. That man was born to be a defensive co coordinator. <laughs> Herzog, he's got 10 points. How aggressive is Tom on the offensive end this game as opposed to the last five or six games? I mean, it's night and day. He's going against a pretty good player, Cameron Moore, defending Herzog in the post. Yeah, that's an important point. I mean, Cameron Moore's no slouch. No. I mean, he could play big time defense there in the post. Wow, that's Cameron Moore. And that is a great ball fake. You saw two UCF players go flying in a good duck down. That's one of the things you could take advantage of is that UCF is a great blocking team, but they will go for almost every single shot fake. Herzog! That's the Whoa. spin cycle. Where did, that, where did that come from? UCF with a one-point lead. Herzog with 12. A la Kevin McHale. Herzog has more than doubled his season average, 5.5 points per game. Sanders, that's a two. Way off. Herzog's got the board. Now, Mike, this is a different Knights team with Herzog when he's out of foul trouble. Exactly. Rebound more. Exactly. And I think yeah, even Coach Jones is going to be forced to, if he gets one or two fouls, to kind of keep him in there and have faith that he, he'll be able to not get another foul. But that's such a hard decision to make as a coach. No fouls right now for Herzog. I mean, you just watch how under control Johnson is. I mean, that's a big time pass. Man. Wow, and he goes at the seven-footer, gets it to drop. I mean, Johnson's not, a player. not more than 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, Listed with at 5'8". 5'8", with no hesitation whatsoever on taking at the seven-footer, Herzog. Off the mark right there, UAB with a one-point lead and possession.
UAV is going to take their time. They're going to run their set. There's a lob. Ooh, they missed him. Here's Moore in the post going at Herzog and with a right hook gets it over the seven footer. That's a good move. And I think when Moore, you know, puts on some weight, he's going to have a chance to be really, really good in this league because he's got the tools, he has the athleticism and the length. But he puts on a little weight, be able to bang with the big boys. He's going to be something to, something to watch. Right through the hands of Herzog. Jordan put it on the money. Right out Sports Network has bhsn.com online, the leader in local sports. Right now, Sports Network is a 24-hour local sports network dedicated to sports fans in Central Florida and Tampa Bay. We provide in-depth coverage of local sports, including high school, college, and professional teams. So log on, bhsn.com for video, blogs, scores, and more. UAB with a three-point lead. Here comes Aaron Johnson. Johnson with six points and four assists in the early goings. UCF's going to sit in a zone right now. They're going to switch up defense to try and save their legs throughout the course of the game. Way off the mark. And it'll be UCF ball. Is that going to go against Moore? I think so. Yes, it will. Mike Davis didn't like that one bit. Didn't really catch it from that angle, what Moore did. But nonetheless, that's why we don't have striped T-shirts on. <laughs> they got tangled with Sosa. Jordan into Clant. Clant was looking for Sosa. Clant banging with the left hand. And he gets it. I mean, the patience, the patience to make a move like that. The ball stayed in his left hand the entire time. That's a three for Dexter Fields. They can shoot it. You know, you talk about how athletic they are and you know how strong they are when they get to the rim, but you also forget the fact they can shoot the three too. That's offensive. Offensive, yeah. yeah. He didn't need, he had the step. Marcus didn't need to put his shoulder down. Was he going he had the to step. the left? Was he using the left hand, Mike? And he pushed off. <laughs> I know. It, and, and, I, and I'm laughing only for the reason, if it's your first time watching UCF, is, is that Marcus goes to the right 99.9% .9 of the time on offense. And he had it. That was a good move. That was the right move to make. But that push off, that's a good call. It's one of those unique parts of Marcus Jordan's game. He's a left-handed player, although Anytime he's going to the hoop, he's using the right hand for the layup. And he's driving right. UAB now with a four point lead. Soto. That's a block. And, I, and, and, and he was moving. That's the right call. I, it's a good idea by Sykes, but the right call by the referee. Well, we're under four to play when we come back. Obi Soko will get some more free throws. 31-27, the UAB leads.
31-27, the Blazers leading the Knights here at the UCF Arena. Another good crowd on hand for this one. Some fresh starts for first-year coaches here in Conference USA. Tim Floyd and Donnie Jones with two of the best marks of any first-year coaches in the country. Go across, look at Steve Donahue at Boston College, Tad Boyle at Colorado, and then Fred Hoiberg. The mayor. The mayor, but you know, I Heck of a get by UTEP to get Tim Floyd, yeah. all his NBA connections and his basketball knowledge of being the NBA and USC. I mean, he's going to do really good things with that UTEP ball club. UTEP tied for the top record in the CUSA. Soko makes the first. The sixth head coach in UCF basketball history he took over for Kirk Spiro. Spiro now on the staff at Iowa. Uh oh, that's oh an boy. air ball, and the crowd will be on Soko for the rest of the game. Now it's not like this Knights crowd invented the air ball chant, but no. what they do in a unique way is they will continue it every time Soko touches the ball for the rest of the game. Yeah, and, and, and then I think it's going to be amplified even more that it was a free throw. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that gets at players too. It really does. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to be tough as a player because you know it's going to come. That's a good throwback off the press. Clanton had an open look at three, and he's a 41% three point shooter. I think he's got a. He, that was a good ball fake, but I think if he caught it and saw Sosa, he needs to be one pass ahead because Sosa was open in the corner. And it needs to be one of those quick touch passes, that boom, boom kind of pass. Gaynor and Herzog back in the game. Clanton thought about it again. And here's an open look. Good throwback. Oh, Gainer over the back. Yep, it's a good hustle by PJ. Excellent box out by UAB, though. Well, the offense has gone a little cold. UCF field goal percentage down to 44% for the game. Three-point field goal percentage is 25%, two of eight. When one, when one team sits in his own, it's going to slow any game down. It's a double high ball screen. Sanders. Top of the key. Swish. It's automatic for him. Gets his feet set from the top of the key. It's a great looking shot. Johnson's already got five assists. Gainer for three. Front rim. You gotta watch out for Aaron Johnson to transition. Good pass. Here comes Jordan. There's a transition game. Slows it up. You'd like to see a set for UCF. UAB's done a very good job of guarding UCF in the half court in the last five or six possessions. Herzog in the post. Well, this isn't pretty at all. Oh, you bailed him out. Soko did, yes. That's his second. Soko bailed him out. Can't do that. I know Coach Davis is talking to him right now. He said, son, you got to understand something. You, ha you were doing great for, third, for about 28 seconds. You were doing great. And then you let your mind wander a little bit and say, let me see if I can't get a steal here. And that's not UAB's forte. I mean, they're going to get steals, yes, but they're, the fact that they're so sound that they don't make really any mental errors on the defensive end. Uh, Herzog missed the lob. Blazers with a chance now to extend their biggest lead of the game. UCF back to man-to-man. -man. 35-27 the score. Blazers have the third best record in Conference USA play. Sanders may have gotten away with an extra step right there, but he missed it anyway. Fields defending Jordan. Clanton got stuck behind the hoop. 
went off the backboard. Johnson. <laughs> blocked by Herzog. It's a good time to get on transition. Boy, UAB gets back in a hurry, don't they? Taylor Young for three. Swish. That's big for him. That's big for two reasons. One, that means UAB has to start honoring Taylor Young, and it was a good job of Marcus Jordan not forcing anything in semi-transition and finding the open, the open Taylor Young. What a kick. Are you serious? What a kick. Wow. That's backcourt. Oh, uh, the acting job did not go how Johnson planned, and Sykes makes him pay. It's a three-point game. Isaiah Sykes, he's one of those glue guys. He's always around the ball, gets those loose balls, finishes strong. Johnson calls timeout. He tried to draw the foul against Sykes, and now, the referees weren't buying it. It's very rare that you're going to get a foul called against you on a loose ball when you try to act like you're getting a foul. That, that really doesn't happen right now. Now, Mike Davis is going to draw up a play here. you got 9.7 seconds left. Right now, you, you go to your options. You, you know you're, you can get something off of the ball screen with Aaron Johnson, but don't be surprised to see you'll see the ball you see the ball screen be a decoy something for so Sanders can get open on any type of like double screen or stagger away that's kind of the stuff the type of offense they like to run is you have to have multiple options Aaron Johnson comes off the ball screen with Sanders coming off some type of down screen or double down screen on the other side coming up at halftime we will break down the conference USA standings we'll have first half stats and highlights. Also an interview with UCF baseball pitcher Brennan Dobbins. And my former classmate Brennan Dobbins. Amara Thompson checks in, the walk-on. Seen only a few minutes of action. What a pass. Perfect my pass. Goodness. Perfect execution. UCF doesn't get that. Hail Mary off in time. Knights. A losing record when trailing at halftime. 37-32 the score. UAB point guard Aaron Johnson has been terrific. He's got seven assists. And we said at the beginning of the broadcast, this UAB team goes as its point guard goes. We'll break down the first half when we come back. Blazers leading 37-32. From the UCF Arena at Knights Plaza, this is the Bright House Sports Network Halftime Show.
from the UCF Arena at Knights Plaza, this is the Bright House Sports Network Halftime Show. It's 37 to 32, the UAB Blazers leading the UCF Knights. David Bauman alongside Mike O'Donnell, the former point guard for this UCF Knights basketball team. Now the point man of our broadcast. Mike, let's break down the first half. It was a big first half for Knights center Tom Herzog with 12 points and six boards. But that point guard for UAB, Aaron Johnson, was terrific. Well, Mike Davis calls him the heart and soul of this UAB basketball team, and he does such a good job of 